This unremarkable photograph of a Canadian number no. one squadron hurricane having its engine tested has been in our collection for years. But a recent discovery in a rare wartime document has shown it to be probably the rarest Battle of Britain photograph ever taken. So why is it so special? Well, at first glance, the hurricane appears to be in the standard late 1940 markings, with a sky band around the rear fuselage, which was introduced in the November of 1940. V6671 was with the squadron from September until it crash-landed on the 29th of December. So this would date the photograph somewhere at the very end of 1940. But if you look closely, you'll see that the trees in the background are in full leaf. And if you look closer at the sky band, it appears to be much darker than the undersides, which should have been painted in the same color. Something was not right about this photo, so we set out to find out the real story. The only other record of Battle of Britain hurricanes having bands around the rear fuselage was a limited experiment carried out by the Polish 303 squadron in mid-September 1940. At the time, 11 Group had started to pair its squadrons in the air to provide a stronger attacking force. This meant there were several packs of RAF fighters airborne at any one time trying to find their paired squadron. When a formation of aircraft was spotted, common sense dictated that they approach the other formation as if it were hostile, until they could confirm it was friendly. Unfortunately, this led to many dangerous situations, including a fatal encounter on the 17th of September 1940, when a pilot of 504 Squadron lost control whilst taking evasive action after being bounced by a section of hurricanes and died when his parachute failed. To open. 11 Group therefore instructed the Poles to paint an experimental red band around the rear fuselage of three of their hurricanes to see if it made them easier to identify at a distance. Luckily, photographic evidence exists of two of these aircraft, V6665RFJ and P3120RFA. But this diagonal stripe looks very different from the thick stripe on the Canadian aircraft. So could they be connected? The original order sent to 303 Squadron simply instructs them to apply a red band around the fuselage. There is no mention of a style of the band, so the Poles clearly chose to paint theirs as a thin diagonal band in the style of a Polish pre-war flight commander marking. So, could the Canadians have been part of the experiment too? We asked wing leader historian Simon Parry to take a look. Well, both 1 Canadian and 303 Squadron were based at the same airfield, which was Northolt, just to the west of London. But remarkably, both squadrons had recently reported being attacked by Spitfires. Simon searched through the Canadian Squadron's operations record book for September 1940 for any mention of this trial but found nothing. Surely they would have recorded it somewhere. But then, Simon made a breakthrough. The Canadians decided to keep two ORBs. One, a very formal affair for the RAF. The second, a more tongue-in-cheek record for their own archives. Scouring through the mid-September pages, Simon came across this entry for the 17th of September, 1940. We had one section equipped with orange bands around the fuselage, which didn't cause any particular attention being paid to us by the Spitfires or the enemy. This was the breakthrough we needed. Proof that the Canadians had taken part in the trial and painted orange bands around the fuselage on the same day that the Poles applied their markings. But is the marking on B6671 this tactical orange band? Being only applied to three aircraft means that V6671 would have to have flown on the 17th of September. Simon checked the ORB for details of the flights that day. So, yeah, here it is. Um, V6671 flew twice that day at 15, 15 and 1700 hours. So we can say almost certainly 
that this was one of the three aircraft that received the orange bands. It's not known how long the trial lasted or how long the aircraft carried the markings, but the trial undoubtedly had an influence on the introduction in November 1940 of the light-coloured sky band around the rear fuselage of all RAF fighters, a marking that remained in place for the rest of the war. To learn more about these experimental markings, look out for Wing Leader's new book, Battle of Britain Combat Archive No. 14, which is published in September 2023.